Okay, welcome back to another episode of the Shed Geek Podcast, and uh, special guest with me here today, Nick, you want to introduce yourself and uh, tell the audience a little bit about who you are, maybe what you do? Yeah, so I'm the I'm Nick Bishop. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer of Shed Genius. Um, we are a full-service uh, marketing agency in the shed industry, um, shed-focused. Uh, where we are a little bit different is that we also... Um, we're kind of a virtual dealer as well. So with some of our clients, we we take we kind of take the, the keys to the car where we, we handle the Facebook, the website, and then we also handle sales for our clients as well. Um, but we also do traditional anything else you need. Um, if you need a Google campaign, <laughs> social media help, website, um, we can kind of do it all. If you need an interior designer for a she shed, I'm sure we'll figure out how to make it work. Very nice. I may be looking for yeah. an interior designer <laughs> soon. Um, I have a, a shed in the back of my yard that I want to turn into the studio space and it's just sitting there, um, undone. So, yeah, I, I think, I think we're, we're pretty resor- resourceful bunch. And I think if, if we can just be a resource for whatever you need, I, I mean, yeah. yeah. Well, I love the name shed genius, yeah. uh, just rolls off the tongue. It's really cool. Uh, marketing is obviously, I've been getting just, uh, inundated with, mm-hmm. uh, marketing here lately, either folks have been reaching out to, or just, uh, folks that have found me through wanting to offer that service and mm-hmm. get in front of people. Marketing's so uh, elusive now, isn't it? Like Definitely. you know it's, what? Like I'm assuming you've worked in marketing for a while. Yeah. So I, I started. Uh, I've I've I'm I'm not really I haven't been in the shed industry very long. I'm only the last about ten months. Um, but before that, I was I was kind of ran the whole gamut of marketing. Um, started out in uh, higher education. Uh, I was a graphic designer at a community college. Um, and then I uh, worked in the car business for a little bit as a graphic designer marketer. Um, and then from there I worked in ad agencies with, with small, big clients. Um, and then the nonprofit world doing economic development marketing. Um, so, I mean, I've, I've had clients that range from HVAC companies all the way up to billion dollar publicly traded aviation companies. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. Very nice. So, uh, what drew you to marketing? What, what kind of like just made that happen did you wake up and say i want to be a marketing professional yeah so i've always um like graphic design is more my like the the passion that started it all yeah um i've always been drawn to like logos and colors and how shapes interact with each other and and kind of what draws your eye to things um but but even kind of more marketing um I've always loved advertising. Um, I feel like I just kind of have like an, an eidetic memory for, for ads. I remember ads when I was a kid, like old Sears ads or, or things like that. Little what's, G- what's one of the oldest ads you remember? Uh, the It actually became really popular on like TikTok earlier this year. Um, it's a Sears ad about, it's a couple, they're in their kitchen and their uh, air conditioner went out. And um uh, <laughs> like the wife is like, oh, what's what's the weather supposed to be like today? And, and the husband's like, oh, it's another scorcher, and it just kind of goes from there. You guys should really <laughs> look it up. It, you know what I remember? I remember I'm stuck on Band Aid. Yeah, Band Aid stuck exactly. on me. Exactly. <laughs> like Stanley Steamer, like those St- kinds of jingles. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just always loved it. Um, I was kind of like that kid that I sat in front of the TV, and my brothers and sisters would be like, I just want the commercials to be over, and I would actually just want more. Yeah. Um, I was super weird when it came you're to like, stuff like you're that. like watching the Super Bowl commercials mm-hmm. and then like leaving during the game. Yeah. That's 100%. <laughs> it. Yeah. Well, have, what, like what's up with Liberty? Have you caught that jingle? The Liberty, yeah, Liberty, 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 yeah. Liberty, Liberty. I'm like, come it's, on guys. It's, <laughs> it's just top of mind awareness. They just, and, it, and it works. Yeah, it so the, works. They want to be the first thing you think of when you think of insurance. Insurance. Yeah. No, that's very cool, man. I like the story. Uh, so how'd you get to know the shed industry? You're 10 months in and you're like, Hey, I want to jump into marketing with the yeah. uh, shed industry because, I mean, there's a need in, yeah. this, in this industry. So, I, I mean, back in, in January, February, I was just kind of on my path. You know, we were I was working for a nonprofit in Wichita, Kansas. Um, we did economic development, so we tried to lure or not lure, market the, yeah. the community. <laughs> um, that it made it attract, it showed all the attractive things that businesses would, would find appealing. Um, and I was just kind of on that path and keeping going and, um, I received a, a Facebook message from a, an old friend um, named Phil Carcelawi. Um He owns Newfound Rentals, um, and he he had a, a client who needed some some wait, marketing. Let, let me see if I can find this. Wait a minute. Say so, uh, Newfound again. Newfound. <laughs> oh, there we go. That's what we needed to do. <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> um, and he had a client who needed some marketing needs. They they, they were working with an agency, and uh, he was kind of wanting to simplify things and. 
And so we, we had an introductory call and I was like, yeah, I think this is something we could do. And then that kind of took off to us having more of an expanded role where we, we took over their, their entire social media, their, their website. And then we even we started doing their digital sales. Um, and that's when that kind of started taking off. We're like, well, you know, maybe we kind of have something here. So we picked up another client and another. Um, and then before we knew it, you know, we, we, we had a full fledged business. Um, and then when we, we, we put our first ad in the, the shed builder magazine and it's kind of just taken off from there. It goes, it just all the snowballs after yeah, that. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's a, a testimony to the fact that we have a, a need in this industry for uh, marketing. People want to work with folks in marketing that they mm -hmm. can trust. I've interviewed tons of marketers lately, which is cool. So I'm learning a lot too. Um, it, it's again, it's so elusive that like marketing seems to kind of be hard to, to, to pin to the wall, right? It's like jello, yeah. you know, like what is marketing? Uh, what's the famous quote, you know, like half of your marketing dollars work. Nobody yeah. knows what half. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Trying to measure what you're doing in marketing mm -hmm. is such an important thing. Like, is it getting reach or. Yeah. Something in my, my career I've really specialized in is branding. Um, and I think a lot of people think of, of branding as just like a logo and a name and maybe some colors and, you know, how that all works together on a website and a brochure. And what branding really is, is a promise. And it's what a business is promising to its clients. And so even like how your sales staff interacts with your customers is your mm -hmm. brand. That's your marketing. Yeah. Um, and how do you how do you get an ROI on that? I don't know, but we we believe that that having the best customer interaction is is really it's best for the, our brands, best for our clients, best for their businesses. No, I I, th I think that's great. So, uh, so what do you anticipate the marketing looks like for the shed industry over the next five years or ten years? They're, we're seeing so much with e commerce, obviously, um, and and how do you separate the branding from from the marketing? Uh, obviously you got companies that are coming and looking for design mm -hmm. that that's cool. But how do you focus on specifically the, the e-commerce side? The e-commerce. Can you rephrase that one more time? Well, just kind of, uh, I guess the thought that I'm trying to go for is like, um, if, if you're, how are companies going to market their self? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, e-commerce wise, um, I stop at a lot of lots across the country. And mm -hmm. really it's just in, in my head, it's like, maybe no signs are out there or whatever, but when you talk to people, some will say, yeah, I throw signs all over. People know where I'm at. Mm -hmm. I'm on this high traffic count road. And then I have other people that are like, yeah, I don't care about any of that. Mm -hmm. I reach tons of people by marketing online. Yeah. I, I think, I think the way that, and we've, we've seen success is, is, a, is casting a broad net to, to mm -hmm. grow trust. Um, Cause I think as we, as the shed industry kind of goes from, lots to more maybe digital yeah. is having that trust um, because you know in, in previously and even a lot now you go to a lot and you talk to a sales professional and there's kind of like you can build that trust really quickly but if you just kind of see an ad on Facebook you really don't know what business is behind that yeah. um, and so you know we do a combination of, of Facebook Google um, but then we also focus really hard on our Google profiles for our clients and reviews because we think building that trust is, is the backbone of the marketing for each client. Um, because if they don't trust us, they're not going to talk to us. Yeah. And so what we've, what we've really focused on is getting that, that trust established as quick as possible. So having a, a very established visual brand, um, but also word of mouth and spreading out as much as we can. Um, reviews are something that we push really, really hard. Why are you, why, why are reviews so, so like, uh, important in the process? I, th there's a f I think there's a few ways that they are really important. One, um, people trust people and they don't necessarily trust businesses. Um, mm. and so if, if you see a review from Sally just down the street, even if you don't know who Sally is, you trust that over, you know, XYZ business saying we're great. We do great work. We have a great quality. Um, but if Sally is saying, these guys were fantastic. They delivered my shed. The quality was off the off the charts. Yep. They didn't damage my yard when they delivered it. Yep. Um, there's that that trust that you're going to believe um, rather than if, if the company said it themselves. I like your statement, people trust people, not mm -hmm. business. I, I think it's very accurate. And another thing too is Google with with their algorithm and SEO and everything else. If you have reviews, you're going to kind of be put towards the top. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's not a you know foolproof thing, but um, if you have reviews and you have a well built out Google profile and you have SEO through your website, it all works together in, in cohesion. Um, and so it's that's another way. But I think mostly that people trust people and not businesses. Yeah, I think you know even in the shed industry, uh, I have sold to the shed industry, still sell mm-hmm. uh, different products or services to the shed industry. We're one of the hardest sales, uh, to mm. be honest with you. Very skeptical, very conservative. And I, I saw it firsthand myself. You know, we, we had that ad in the Shed Builder magazine, and then if, uh, it was probably about a month, two months later in the, the Shed sales group. Um, people were very skeptical, and before I could kind of jump in there, and, and, you know, they were, I wouldn't say they were tearing us apart, but they were very skeptical of what yeah. we were doing. Yep. Um, but I think as soon as I could put a face to the business and I could yeah. explain who we are, what we do, and that we're not – you know, competing with, with our own companies across or within the same state lines. And we're not using boilerplate copy and, and content across our, each client. You know, that branding is really important to us and our clients. And, um, yeah. No, I, I think um, I think that's just we're, we're all consumers mm-hmm. by, you know, by nature. We're going to be. We're going to go and, and consume just like anybody else. Um, you don't really get out of your headspace whenever it comes to selling, whenever you're becoming a consumer because it's it's almost kind of like you, you you think well i'm viewing the same tactics or the same sales processes that someone else is using um a good example is um uh, follow-up mm-hmm. you know you talk about follow-up with the customer I, I know companies that say you know i'll call them i'll follow up once i'm not going to bug them i'm not going to drive them crazy uh, i know some people who say i get the majority of my sales by doing six or seven different follow-up calls mm-hmm. um and people say, well, don't you feel like you're bothering them? And some people say, no, I'm just appreciative that they were consistent to yeah. actually continue to reach out to me. So everybody's different. I mean, and you're not going to sell to everyone exactly. anyway, you know, so, uh, and, and you don't want to create an echo chamber where you're only selling to people that uh, are like you mm-hmm. and you only buy from people that are like you. You don't expand. Hello, Shed Builder. This is the Shed Geek here to tell you about one of the coolest things I've seen. The first of its kind, the Joey Pivot Lift. I have visited hundreds of shed manufacturing shops across the country. And one of the first things shop owners and shed builders mention is the amount of fatigue that is placed on the everyday builder. If you own a shed shop, you know that your builder is an asset to your future. With the Joey Lift, you'll see more production and your builder will appreciate you investing in their well-being by replacing the thousands of steps they have to take up and down a ladder all day. The Joey Lift is perfect for shed builders, roofers, painters, and laborers working to add that special layer of detail on your shed. It's so easy, even a geek can drive it. Yeah. <laughs> something, that. something I've come to love is, is like a handwritten note. Mm. Um, so I, I'm from Kansas. I'm not a big K-State football fan, but, you know, growing up, you always heard about Bill Snyder writing uh, a thank you note or a thank you card to the opposing team's head coach afterwards. And that's something that has always stuck with me. Um, and that's something I always try to do is after I meet with somebody, um, even if it's a quick interaction, I always try to send a thank you card just because I think it means something a little bit more than yeah. just an email, a phone call, something like that. I've tried to do that with like guests on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, I've gotten so busy. I've gotten terrible about follow up, <laughs> but I always try to, uh, you know, write a thank you note that mm-hmm. says, uh, and I appreciate you coming on the show and that you would share your, uh, expertise and, and stories really with, uh, with just the shed industry in 10 months. Yeah. What, what surprised you the most about the shed industry? Everything. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> everything. All right. I, I'm com. Oh, 100% transparency. When Phil and I sat down at Dempsey's Burger Pub in Wichita, Kansas, I thought he was crazy. Um, <laughs> I went home that night and I told my wife, I said, Phil wants me to help with marketing on sheds. And I was like, this is this is not going to work. Um, and as we started meeting more people, I started seeing the need. Because um, that first client wasn't the only one that was, was hurt by an agency. Um, you know, I, when I worked in an agency, you know, we'd have these small business owners and they're, re- they're really busy, especially when you, when you own a small business and you're doing everything, you don't have time to check in on whether all the Google a- yeah. ads that you're paying for are being ran. Yep. Um, and that, that always bothered me. And so when we started meeting more people who they had a website built by this, 
uh, agency and the form didn't work or they got this website built for them and it has zero SEO so th- and it's not linked to, to Google Search Console so they're not even appearing on Google whatsoever and they paid astronomical amounts of money for this and they're getting nothing in return for it. It just it, it started a real belief in my heart that we could help people oh. and, and, you know, have a successful business. Um, but the, I think the other thing too is, you know, being from Wichita, Kansas, we're the air capital of the world. Yep. Um, and so it's, you know, a hundred years of aviation history built on the backs of people who work hard and figure things out. And so that's something I'm really familiar with. My favorite story about Wichita, Kansas is sometime in the seventies or eighties during an economic downturn at uh, Beechcraft, they stopped making planes and started making um, pizza pans. Because really? because they, they didn't want to lay the, the workforce off, and Pizza Hut was headquartered in Wichita at the time, and so that they just kind of partnered That's right. up. And, I remember Pizza Hut, yeah. And so that was something like like they you come together, you figure out for the better, and that's something that I think the world has kind of forgot about, uh-huh. and I've rediscovered in the shed industry. Um, uh-huh. when we, when, at the shed show back in September, you meet these brilliant people yeah. who have solutions on solutions for every problem. And they, they figure it out. I don't know how they figure it out. Um, and that's just, I love the people and I love the, the hardworking aspect and the, 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 you know, the, the, the spirit of invention that everybody has. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's, I think been, I, I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. And that was, that was probably my favorite thing that I've d- discovered in the industry. No, I, I think that's great. Um, I, I've, just been visiting a lot of shops recently you know and and a lot of the shops have just the engineering mindset that they have Mm -hmm. uh and i i I tell people all the time it's got to have something to do with like this german concept of like this german concept of of engineering Mm -hmm. uh that they just always seem to do and then the the fact that that some of these shops don't even have like fluorescent lighting and it's, it's all it's all kerosene lamps and that kind of thing and that that's just it's so amazing to me you know yeah. I, I come from a world of apple computers and smartphones and that kind of thing and and these people do so much more with less i don't remember who i was talking to recently um i think it was uh it was huxman uh from shed hub and and i said uh, you're a big brain and you're just really smart. You're a really smart dude. And he said, well, you're really smart just in your own way. Mm-hmm. And it, and it, and I appreciated the compliment, but it, it made me think, you know, like how much I value communication and how like a podcast would be something that would mm-hmm. be my, my destiny somehow. Right. Because I value communication. I love talking, uh, picking up on body language. I think that's why I kind of appreciated sales. I wasn't the best at sales, mm-hmm. but I appreciated sales. Uh, I, um, there's a book called the challenger sale and, uh, says that's, you know, kind of the, the status quo, if you will, for, for sales. And, and a lot of times it's somebody who does challenge you farther and pushes you more. And I'm a relationship builder. So mm-hmm. out of four styles, I wasn't the, the number one tier. I was the second tier, but it's one that I can't change because it's my personality. Build a relationship and then create a sale mm-hmm. off the relationship. So the question is, like, can you do that? Uh, is that something that you do whenever you're teaching marketing, um, you know, necessities? to the companies that you work with. Do you have time to build a relationship and build that trust with someone uh, whenever they come in and they're buying a shed? Do you mean like us with clients or clients well, with? I'm curious, do you do you focus on that whenever you talk about marketing with your, because like you said, branding is mm-hmm. even how your customers, you know, how you treat your customers and your salespeople create your trust, mm-hmm. create trust with your customers. I, I found that whenever I was selling, a lot of times it's like, man, this is difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, No one wants to give you the time because I'm passionate. They say sales is a transfer of enthusiasm. So I'm passionate about what I've got. And I want to tell you about the building. I want to tell you about all the product. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you about why this is a good value. And you're looking for something today. And and this meets your need. Mm -hmm. Can I transfer that enthusiasm over to them? I found that in a small amount of time, the customer who's very impulsive it's really hard to get them to slow down enough yeah. to build that relationship. What, what advice would you, I guess, offer in that case? Yeah, that, I mean, that's a tough one, especially like those, those impulse buyers. Um, I, I think just communicating the, I don't know, what word do I want to use here? The communicating the, the, the value and the, the, the workmanship that, that goes into it and the, but also like what need 
is it going to serve them? Mm-hmm. Um, or what, 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 what need is it going to, what, what problem is it going to solve for them? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's a tough one. I'm definitely not a salesperson. Um, that's <laughs> well, and that's something else to point out too. You're in marketing and those two things go hand in hand mm-hmm. and really they run parallel, but they never touch by like a track, right? Yeah. And that, marketing is marketing and sales is sales. So. Yeah. That's the, you know, I, I worked, I worked in the car business, but I never sold a car. Um, I, I understand the process and how it works, but I mean, salespeople, they're, they're a different breed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> something that I, I mean, I, I've, I, I, when I worked when I was in high school, I worked at a movie theater and one of my job was, what well, jobs was to train employees and customer service was a big thing. And so I think, you know, I have a little bit of skills on, on that sort of like that part of selling and, yeah. and how to, how to cultivate a customer relationship just with, you know, making them feel important. Um, but sales is something that's it's very difficult. And, you know, in, in, in my role now, you know, I do have to sell our services and that that's super hard. Yeah. That's something I've had to kind of step into. Um, you know, I, sales calls still scare me, <laughs> but it's yeah. like I said, it's something we got to do, um, you know, to keep the lights on. But I've, I've always, I've always kind of, you know, been along the model of, you know, you, you it's a, it's a mutually beneficial relationship. Yeah. Um, and so even when I'm on sales calls, I probably shouldn't do this, but I always give out like a little bit of information. Um, like, then, you know, I've, I think I was on one last Friday and I threw out this like little bit of information about like, if you don't use us, you know, and you go use whoever, just make sure they're, you know, using this kind of thing. Sure. I think in that we were talking about Google campaigns and it was make, make sure you use a landing page. Don't yeah. just send them straight to your homepage, but use a landing page, that kind yeah. of thing. Um, just because, you know, even if you don't use us, I want you to walk away with a little bit of piece of information. Are you a shed manufacturer, dealer, or hauler looking for a trusted resource to build or upgrade your website? Do you need a simple business website or a more robust and dynamic e-commerce site? Are you looking for an affordable option with digital marketing solutions for your small business? Are you looking for paid ads using Google search engines or social media platforms to reach a new audience? If you answered yes to any of these questions, it's time to check out Troyer Websites of Texas. Did you know that 46% of the 5.6 billion searches made each day are for local businesses? At Troyer's, our SEO strategies will help you get on the first page of search results for your shed business. At Troyer Websites of Texas, you will be sure to get five-star customer service with proficiency and skill. Troyer Websites just launched their managed digital services to incorporate all your marketing needs into a single dashboard. Here at the Shed Geek Podcast, we trusted the team at Troyer Websites of Texas to develop our website, and we couldn't be happier with the results. To know more or schedule a discovery call, simply contact the Shed Geek at 618-309-3648 or email info at shedgeek.com. Yeah, I would do that in sales a lot of times is, um, you know, if somebody come up and what the customer doesn't always have the information that mm-hmm. they need, uh, they just latch on to the, the information that is the path of least resistance. Yeah. So if they see a shed and then they come by from, or, or at least come get a quote from you, you know, uh, this guy down the street has this for, you know, 4,000 mm-hmm. and you're 5,000. It's like, well, there's a few things to consider. This one's four foot longer. Mm-hmm. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. you know, uh, which one's wood, which one's metal, yeah. or is this shingle? Insulated or, window. Yeah, versus insulated nine. window. Yeah, this three quarter inch versus five eighths and yeah. 16 on center. And you're, you're trying to explain all that. And sometimes that just doesn't matter. Yeah, to the, like to the, the customer, especially if it's if it, like you said, an impulse buyer where they, they yeah. just want something. Um, you're overselling, overselling, overselling. One hundred percent. I think that's that's something that um, you know we, we do have sales guys on our staff um, who who are professionals at that, and they they navigate it like champions, um, and they are better than me one hundred percent on that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I, that's that's a tough job. I I don't I don't envy sales folks. What's some of the more interesting things you've seen? Uh, in your time marketing just in general yeah oh gosh i've i don't i don't know how much the audience knows what a qr code is um but when i it's, if you don't know they're like small little codes that you scan with your phone you usually have to be pretty close to them i had a, a client uh when i was freelancing back in the day that asked me to put a qr code on a billboard that's that's a little because that's you, different you can't really scan a qr code when it's 400 feet away right um you know i've seen I've seen blunders that, that, you know, ruin companies that, you know, it's, it's tough to, it's tough to see. Um, I, I, we've, we've done fun little giveaways that, that, uh, um, yeah, they just kind of run the gamut. When I was, uh, uh, the, the, the nonprofit I was with before, um, we did economic development. 
uh, before I was there, it's probably one of the coolest campaigns I've ever seen. Um, they had like those old school viewfinders that you you look into them and you click it and the wheel spins and it has a picture. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So they they had a viewfinder that was like that and it had like little different tidbits about Wichita and they they sent them out to these different companies and and it was one of the most successful campaigns I've I've seen and I've just super out of the box thinking things like that. No, I think that's great. Um, I enjoyed whenever we were out there. We visited like the uh, the. Uh, I don't remember what it was called, but it was like the country western like museum or something or yeah. another. It was kind of like, like Cowtown. A, yeah, Cowtown. Yeah. That was it. Yeah, we went out there. I really want to get like an episode out there. Yeah, like the, you know, like do like the John Wayne whistle. I'm or sure whatever. we can set it up. <laughs> would be cool. <laughs> we could. Me and you can get on one end of the town and, and have like a draw. Yeah, uh, it was really fun. Uh, the QR code. Uh, yeah, I've seen some of those on sheds already. Um, yeah, and I, I think you know we've that was something that um, you know when I when I first got into marketing and um, and I was in, uh, in the higher education world, they were everywhere. But back then, you had to have an app. Uh-huh. Um, so they, you know, we put them on things; they would never get scanned, and then they were dead, and nobody used uh-huh. them anymore. And then I think that was something that the pandemic really brought back. Uh-huh. Um, it took me a few years to kind of warm up to it, and I've started. Um, we use that with a lot of our clients, just different ways. It's just a perfect way that you can track activity. Yeah. Um, and it's it's simple. You know, people don't really want to remember what a URL is. They can just kind of scan it with their That's phone. Right. And, yep. and it, you know, bring it Yeah, I've website. got uh, already generated a couple QR codes for, like, the affiliate partners and stuff like mm-hmm. that just to kind of uh, br- help brand, Yeah. you know, things like that. Um, gosh, uh, the Super Bowl ad last year, mm-hmm. they had one on the screen. Yeah. Genius. I was I was at a football game in uh, Boulder, Colorado this last weekend, and on each bleacher that they had between each seat, it had uh, a QR code, and it, it like, yeah. brought up fan experience things and coupons that you could get and all this stuff. Yeah. And I was like, goodness, what, what a, I've never seen a comeback it's like turned, QR Yeah, code. it's turned so much. Uh, well, for, for me, it's always just been the menus, mm-hmm. especially during the pandemic, and uh, I think I've told the story before, but... I went in to sit down at a, a huddle house with my my dad to eat, and we'll go out, you know, once every week or every couple of weeks. And uh, um, they didn't have a menu, and I was like, yeah. "Here, Dad, I got, I got you." And yeah. I, he doesn't have a smartphone, so I, I scan it, and he's like, "What's that?" And he's trying to figure it out, and he's like, "He thinks I'm a wizard now." Mm-hmm. He's like uh, telling all of his friends that I'm like the smartest guy ever yeah. because I can pull the the menu up. And it's just it's a learning curve, yeah. really. And I tease him about it, but it's we have a good fun laughing about it another another fun little like marketing story um i don't think this campaign ever got used um but when i was when i was working uh, at the nonprofit, we were trying we were working with the city of wichita to try to come up with a campaign to lure talent from denver to come to wichita and so we were trying to think of like a funny tagline and and like how the campaign would 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 go and we were thinking about just like just trashing mountains not like actually but just being like mountains are not fun like, why would you want to be around mountains? You can come to Wichita, Kansas, live in the plains. Um, and we were thinking about having, like, that tagline put on, like, a banner that gets towed behind a plane to fly over downtown Denver. Just, like, funny little different ways that we can, you know, just, just kind of break up the monotony of yeah. the world a little bit. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, I, I, I love the comedy aspect of it. I always say God gives us a sense of humor, so there's nothing wrong with uh, laughing. And, and I like to do a lot of that and, and have fun and uh, be responsible all at the same time. Um, no, I, I think it's really cool. Um, what's some of like, uh, some of your cooler stories that you've run into so far? Hey guys, this is the shed geek and I'm here to tell you about the latest in financial innovation to hit the shed industry. It's a program called backyard finance. Everywhere I go, shed manufacturers and shed sellers are always asking, how can I get a better payment option for my customer at backyard finance? They're making this a reality. You might be asking, how do I sign up? Simple, just go to Backyard Finance, click on the Get Started Now button, and create an account. After that, you'll have 200 plus banks competing to give your customer the best financial terms possible. With Backyard Finance, you can service your customers two ways, direct to customer lending or direct to merchant lending. With direct to merchant lending, simply fill out an application. It takes about two to four weeks to process that application but it'll allow you a variety of financing options to make you a more competitive retailer. With FICO scores as low as 500, 600, or 700 plus, your customers will receive financing options with APRs as low as 2.99% or as high as 29.99%. Credit applications are approved in just 15 to 45 seconds. To know more, contact Backyard Finance at 833-692-2286 
or email info at backyardfinance.com today. Backyard Finance, funding backyard dreams. Yeah, so um, I almost worked for the Tiger King. That's what I was um, waiting on. This, that's is what, the, so was, this is kind of the story that's that's followed me. I haven't heard it yet. So. It's, it's, it's kind of followed me ever since it was happening, uh, or ever since it happened. I was at a wedding two years ago, and my, my boss at the time, her her, her husband, was like, I got to hear the Tiger King story. Um, so it was back in, twenty, I think, 2013, so before the Netflix special, before sure. anything of that. Um I was working at a community college and um, it was during the summertime and I was kind of informed that come August I would have no role. Um, and this was back before indeed.com was a thing or okay, job search yeah. sites. And so I went to Craigslist mm-hmm. and there was a, a graphic designer job available in Southern Oklahoma at a zoo. And, um, you know, I, I kind of, I broke my dad's heart when I told him I wanted to go into marketing and graphic design. He wanted me to go to aircraft cause that's, you know, guaranteed money. Um, and so I was, you know, adamant to, to prove to him that I can make a life doing this. So I was like, I'm going to find a job. Hello, Tiger King. Yeah. And so, so I, I responded to this ad. I sent my portfolio in um, and I got a call to set up an interview. And um, once I, I, I got the interview set up, I started, I reread the ad and it, it said things like, it's a, you know, it's a private zoo. They have tigers. And I was like, oh, well, that's really cool. Um, but then it started getting a little weird where it said <laughs> you had to live at the zoo. They had housing for you. Yeah. Um, they they provide you with food. They all this stuff. It kind of, it, that's when it kind of started to sound like a cult, uh, especially when the pay was only like, you know, nine, ten bucks an hour for yeah. a, a professional job. Um but I was adamant. I was going to prove my dad wrong that I could survive <laughs> and, and make a living. Um, so I prepared for the interview and I, you know, the drive from, from Wichita, Kansas to Winniewood, Oklahoma is I think like four, four and a half hours. And so I, I start driving down 135 um, or I-35 down, down south and I get to about parallel with Steer, Stillwater and uh, I get a phone call from my sister-in-law who's from Oklahoma. And she goes, hey, your mom told me you're going to do an interview down in southern Oklahoma. And I was like, yeah, like I'm, I'm stoked for it. I'm, I'm going to prove my dad wrong and I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, work in this industry. And she goes, why don't you Google it? <laughs> and I was like, I never thought about doing that. I'm about to go interview at a place where the, I'm going to live there. I'm going to eat there and I'm going to make no money. And so I Google it and I was like, oh, I mean, yeah, it's, it's kind of run down, but you know, whatever. And she goes, no, 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 Google Joe Exotic. And I was like, okay. And then I turned around and I came <laughs> right back home. Um, Man, you would have been famous. I would have been on the show. <laughs> it was around the same time. If, if you watch the, the Netflix uh, series that his uh, political campaign advisor, he was hired to do marketing. And so I think I would have been the political campaign advisor um, in that show. You'd have been famous. I'd have voted for him just because of <laughs> you. Uh, I think it's great. It's a cool story, man. Not everybody can say they yeah. almost worked for the Tiger King, which yeah. it's kind of like uh, its own uh, defeating story in some yeah. ways. It's yeah. Like, and, I don't know. And luckily, I don't want to either. <laughs> luckily, I've proved my dad wrong <laughs> yeah. without having to work for the Tiger King. Uh, I think it's cool, man. Um, I'm excited for for where you're heading in the industry shed genius where where the name come from like what yeah so that was um that was something you know uh you know we kind of kicked around for a lot um you know so it's the kind of our, our leadership team is is myself and then nate Lindsay. he kind of heads up our sales department um and we kind of kick things back and forth um he wanted your digital online shed dealer and I was like, I don't think that really rolls off the tongue as much. So, um, you know, we, we had a few different ideas and we kind of went back and forth um, because I wasn't familiar with the shed industry. I'd come up with the name and, yep. and you know, um, we'd kind of shop it out to Phil to see what he thought. And he'd be like, well, actually, it kind of sounds like this company that already exists that, you know, like I think like one of them I wanted was like the idea shed. And I was like, that kind of sounds a lot like idea room. So, yeah. so we, we, we didn't go with that. But, um, yeah, I think I wanted – I didn't want something – that kind of just like pigeonholed us into only doing marketing. Like I said, I, yeah. I kind of want to be a solution for whatever your shed business needs. Um, marketing and sales is kind of just like our main focus at the point. Uh, but like I said, if, if you needed s- just kind of anything, like I, like I said, if you, if you want an interior designer for a she shed, I want an opportunity to be able to help with that. If you only want a, a brochure designed, I'd love to help with that. Um, if you want digital sales, you know, we'll, we'll help you with that as well. I kind of just want to, you know, 
be be the solution provider for the industry. That's awesome. Just like all encompassing. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever it is that you're dealing with. Yeah. That was something that I think that I've, you know, in the one thing about my career that I have struggled with, like internally is, you know, my dad built airplanes, my yeah. grandfather serviced airplanes and because of their, their skill set, they are jacks of all trades. Yeah. They can do yeah. anything. Um, and I'm sure everybody thinks that about their dad, but I always go to him when I have any question because I know he has the answer. Yeah. And I've kind of, you know, come to grips with that in my career by saying like, well, I, I know that I can do that. Just not necessarily with like building things. Um, but when it comes to, to, you know, if you need photography, videography, design, marketing, um, or even if you need, uh, to someone to bounce ideas off of. Like, I think that's something that we can be there and help and, and kind of serve that purpose. There's a book I was listening to an audio book and I knew the name of it, but I didn't know the, mm -hmm. the author. Um, it was uh, Simon Sinek had, uh, yeah, Simon had, well, he had suggested okay. this book and it's called the power of giving away power. Mm -hmm. Uh, Matthew Barzun, B A R Z U N the power of giving away power. I was listening to this on the way down. I'm really impressed mm -hmm. already with like, some of the comments that they're they were making in there, you know, trying to jot them down or do like a, a memo. Uh, uh, yeah, mental notes are dangerous. I'm yeah. telling you, <laughs> they, they just go in one one side and out the other. But yeah. um, really impressed with like the idea of like uh, well, Zig Ziglar said, you know, you can have anything you want as long as you can help others get what they want. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, that's kind of the mentality of giving away power. It's kind of the mentality of what you're talking about. You're going to be a solution for whatever your marketing issue is. Um, and I think it's whenever you don't pigeonhole yourself in, mm -hmm. whenever you can offer a solution, no matter what it is, I love creativity. So mm -hmm. I love whenever, whenever people are like, Hey, if there's not a solution, I'll go create one. Exactly. I'll go find one. Yeah. I'll make something happen. Um, you focus a lot of what you do right now is definitely focus on Google ads, Facebook ads. Uh, you build websites. We do. So we're, we are a little bit different. Um, I, I, we, I'm not a developer yeah. by, by trade. Um, I used to uh, dabble into it, but it's never been something I really focused on. Um, and so a big thing I think in, in like the marketing industry is to offer uh, like WordPress or Drupal type websites. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, we went a little bit different route. Um, so we use, we use Squarespace as a, Squarespace as a platform to build our customers' websites. Um, it's, there's never any downtime. Um, if for any reason our customer never wants to work with us ever again, which I hope never happens, um, we hand it over and they can actually, I mean, it's super, it's, it's like a drag and drop, like you build an email. Um, they, that's something that they should feel comfortable that they can do themselves. They won't have to pay um, developers outside of that thing uh, or outside of, of the agency that they hired to build it. Um, so that's kind of something that we've really worked on. Um, and the way that that tool is, I think it has a lot of negative connotations to it from what it used to be. Uh -huh. It used to be very templated. Um, uh -huh. you, you really couldn't do any of your own SEO. Um, and they've really grown over the years. Um, and that's, that's kind of a tool I utilize when I work in the nonprofit world. Uh -huh. um, Cause similar to, to small businesses, nonprofits, you don't, you're kind of a one person doing a lot of different things. Uh -huh. And that was something we didn't have the budget or the manpower and time to build out, you know, fully customizable websites. Um, and so I got really good with using Squarespace. Um, and so what we can do with that tool is actually really powerful. Um, you know, we're working on a client now, working on a website now for a client in West Virginia, and it looks nothing like any other Squarespace site you'd ever seen. Yes. I mean, it looks fully customizable. It has all the functionality you would ever need. Um, and then, you know, we're going to bump up the rankings through Google as well using SEO. Yeah. Um, so I, I, it's, it's, it's just, a, it's not a wrong way. It's not a, or it's not, it's not a right way. And the others are wrong ways. Um, it's just a different way. What's the value of that, um, of creating SEO? What does, what does SEO mean to you? Let me start there. Yeah. So, so SEO, I mean, SEO, that's kind of like a big monster in the room that yeah. <laughs> I think, I think that's, I, I chuckle when I, when I hear a lot of folks talk about SEO because right. I think with, with how Google and other search engines treat it, it's never something you can nail down. Yeah. Um, it's an always evolving, constantly changing. You're, and you have to change with it, uh -huh. and you have to make updates. But, I mean, that's kind of like the lifeblood of, of a business that, that lives online. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of things that go into it. You know, it's, it's content on your site. It's, it's the, the meta tags you use. It's the, the descriptions. It's the keywords you pick. It's and now Google's kind of even put it on like the businesses business profiles. Um, you know they want to show that you're to see that you are, 
you know, using their services and you're updating your Google My Business that you're getting reviews. And then on top of that, they still want your website to still have all the keywords. They want you to constantly make fresh updates to that content as well. Um, and so that's something that, you know, we've, we've, we do for a lot of our clients and, you know, Squarespace is kind of just another tool that makes it a little bit easier. Um, cause as, as a, here's another story. So we, we have a client who before they had a, a WordPress website, um, and, uh, we were kind of making some updates to it, uh, cause they didn't have the budget to rebuild it on a Squarespace, Squarespace platform. So we were kind of doing some, some tweaks and all of a sudden the whole site broke. And so we had to kind of contact the, the gentleman who built it to help us kind of fix it and get it back to where it was okay. and then fix the issue. But just like logging in and, and changing a phone number made the whole site kind of go down. And that's yeah. something that I think could be really terrifying to a small business. And that's something you're never going to get yep. with kind of a Squarespace. No, I like it. Um, so yeah, SEO just t to me, it whenever I, I first started trying to understand what, what is this? What does it really mean? Yeah. Um, it seems like it's ever changing. And there's a lot of people who say, Hey, I've got the answer. I've got it figured out. But, uh, I, I'm like you, I mean, uh, does anybody really have a phone number to Google to just call them yeah. up and say, Hey, what's going on here? Yeah. And, and how do I change that? Um, so, so we've over just in my career, you know, I've, I've dealt with quite a few, um, things with Google and I've actually have a direct line to a, a oh, friend nice. that works there. I finally found one. And, uh, <laughs> There's no answer to me. Like I, I, got, I got nothing that you don't have. Yeah. Um, it's because it is something that's always changing. Yeah. And unless I think you work in that specific department, you really, you don't know either. Even some of the, like the conversations, um, the documentaries I watched, like one that comes to mind big time was like social dilemma and mm -hmm. like, you know, the, the Cambridge analytic, uh, analytic, uh, whatever you yeah. got it. Scandal. Um, you know, the, what a lot of people talked about was with, with ranking, um, it's going to be different from one area of the country to the next. Yeah. And like different, different user to the next. Right. So if you Google, you know, something in, Oh, I don't know, Alabama, it's going to be mm -hmm. different than maybe what you get in Chicago or New York or something. 100%. And then what well, Google, cause back in the day, you know, you could just put like, like it for a shed shed, uh, lot, you could put sheds for sale in Wichita, Kansas. Yep. You could put that on every single page three, four times. And now Google knows your keyword stuffing. Yeah. And so there's like a fine line that you have to, yeah. you have to go. And so how we've, we've kind of always taken like the best rate or the best, the best attempt or the best route to go is to be yourself yeah. because you're like, again, people trust people, not businesses. Yeah. And so, um, more likely than not, as long as you are representing the business and you are doing your best to be like a person, um, you know, it's going to benefit you in different ways. And so if your content is written, like how a person would speak, it's going to, you know, benefit you in a search because that's what people are going to search for. How relevant is Facebook still in the process of selling? I think it's super relevant. Yeah. Um, we don't have any clients that have, have really pushed into um, Twitter or Instagram yet. Yeah. Um, and as since we are, are very young, we haven't pushed any of our clients there because that's a lot of education that we kind of have to do. Yeah. And I think all of those really serve a purpose. Um, like I think Instagram would be a really good way to kind of show a lifestyle of like what buying a shed could change, how it could change your life. Um, TikTok, I think is another way that you could do it. But Facebook is, is I think still like the most powerful tool that you can utilize in the shed business. Um, because as, as much as like, even me as a 29, almost 30 year old, um, I might want to say, Oh, I don't want to get on Facebook because my parents are on there. I'm still on there. Yeah. Um, my nieces and nephews, who are in their teens and twenties are also on Facebook, even though their grandparents are there. Yeah. You're, you're just there. Yeah. Um, whereas not everybody's on Twitter not everybody's on Instagram or TikTok, yep. And Facebook has, has done a really big push in the last, you know, few years to really kind of welcome itself to businesses. Yeah. Um, you know, we're seeing with like Twitter now with, um, since Elon's taken over that, you know, a lot of businesses are kind of pulling back from, from like Twitter because, you know, your content might appear to something that you don't want your business content to be near. Uh -huh. Um, and that, you know, personal beliefs aside, you know, a business you really want to, to, to protect your brand and, you know, Facebook really does a good job of that. And they also give you a really good platform to get in front of people. Yeah. Um, and you, since Instagram is a part of that, it's, it's, uh, it, it, it translates over to there, but I think that when people go on to Instagram, it's for a different thing. I always use Instagram as like an escape. 
Um, you know, I follow a lot of different travelers. Um, and so like I, I, when I, when I go on Instagram, it's an escape from my life. Yeah. Um, whereas like Facebook, it can be like a tool of like, what's going to make my life better. Like what, what, what are things that are happening in my life? And so if I see an ad for like a shed company, well, if I need a shed or I, my garage is so stuffed full of things that I need a, a place to put stuff, you know, that, I feel like that's where Facebook is my solution. So for me, um, gosh, I use all of those except for TikTok, which mm-hmm. I'm considering starting to do and, and maybe put some. Uh, just some short videos out, and especially on my travels, mm-hmm. things like that. Moments like this where I can just throw a 10-second yeah. clip out. Um, YouTube, uh, I mean, I've created a Shed Geek Podcast YouTube channel now. Uh, matter of fact, you can watch this interview on yeah. it if you guys will go look up Shed Geek Podcast and subscribe. Um, but that's harder to build. Yeah. And, and I noticed some people are starting to do, you know, try to build some YouTube channels, uh, maybe even for their shed business. It's the second largest search engine. Yeah, 100%. I think it's it's also like the, it's the, the scariest one to get started mm-hmm. with. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so like I'm, I'm one of my favorite YouTubers is MKBHD, Marquez Brownlee. He, he does like tech reviews and stuff like that. And he uses these like fifteen twenty thousand dollar $20,000 red cameras. Mm-hmm. And... If you watch his channel, you're thinking, oh, I'm going to need to spend $100,000 right. to start a YouTube channel. <laughs> when in reality, like, you can just start with your phone. Yeah. Um, you can go pick up a Bluetooth microphone, um, Red, or it's not Red, Rode makes ones that are, you know, a couple hundred bucks that, you know, just connect right to your phone. You I mean, iPhones and even Android phones nowadays, you know, you get 4K video, you get great audio, and you just kind of you go. And, and if you are yourself and you, you stick to it long enough, you will grow. Yeah. Um, And then if you use all your other platforms and kind of work cohesively together to build that brand and build that trust with your audience and your customer base, I mean, there's nowhere to go but up. Do you think that uh, when you came in as an outside uh, source coming with marketing into the industry, uh, how did you feel the industry was doing in marketing? I was surprised. Um, So like when I, when I first started with, the car business because that was kind of a similar thing mm-hmm. i think most people associate um like companies like especially like car uh, lots with like awful advertising terrible commercials stuff like that um and that's what i expected yeah. i expected like that kind of the same thing like like hard pressure sales cheesy tactics things like that um and i've noticed there's a lot of people that have spent a lot of time putting money and time into to building that really good brand. Yeah. Um, I, a couple, couple weeks ago, I went to go visit Travis Beachy down in uh, Waco, yeah. Texas. And that guy. Ooh, Travis. That, oh, man. See, I need like a, yeah. I, I got to get <laughs> Travis Beachy. What else do I have on here? There we go. All right. <laughs> and the, like the, the brand that he's built with Farm and Yard, like it, yeah. I mean, he's down in Waco with, with the, the folks from Fixer Upper and, yep. and, and Magnolia. And so he's kind of built his brand to not, I wouldn't say like reflect it, but to kind of capitalize on it. Yeah. Um, and so when people go to Waco, you know, they're really interested in that and then they see something that's familiar and they can kind of, they can attach to it and they can, yeah. they can connect with it. Um, and I think that's just absolutely brilliant. It's, it's great, great position that he's done. Um, he's done a lot of work and, you know, high, highly respect that guy. Yeah. Um, but I've, I've seen a lot of that. Like I, I expected, I mean, like I said, logos is like my ultimate passion. And when I went to the shed show, I was expecting just to see awful logos and i can't imagine like how many of the times that i was like that's a beautiful logo like somebody (laughs) spent a lot of time on that and they worked really hard and it's it's you know really unique and just blown away um but even the like kind of going back to like people trust people like when you're meeting these business owners that's their brand and they don't they don't realize they're doing branding but like their business directly reflects who they are and they're just amazing people so you have an amazing brand um and i think that's been like my biggest surprise marketing wise man all of that's cool i think you're gonna have like all the business you want because there's just plenty out there uh for the taking and and we've been talking about it on the podcast for for some time just making it a bigger uh, market you know really because i think we're as strong as our weakest link so you Mm -hmm. know it's really about trying to get those below the equator up to the equator you know and i think like how the what's what's i guess another surprise is like how welcoming it is yeah um you know i i come from you know wichita kansas where we have i think it's like seven different craft breweries and all of them you know they share ingredients they share ideas they collaborate they work together and i thought that was like a, a crazy thing that didn't exist out in the world 
And then when uh, we started being talked about in the shed sales group, yeah, I'm like Jim Mosier hopped in and he kind of, you know, welcomed himself. And I fully expected like this crazy competition. Like, you know, like right, you right, got to stay right. out of here. Dog because dog it, this is where we are. Right. Um, and then, you know, went to the shed show, introduced myself to a few other folks. And I mean, everyone was super welcoming. Yeah. And it, it wasn't like you need to get out of here because, you know, we were here first. Yeah. Um, and I mean, that, that's been like a huge surprise. You know, when I worked in an agency, we hated the agency that was across town and we didn't even share clients. Yeah, and past, didn't, present, didn't even anything. know why. Right? Exactly. It's just like, I don't yeah. know. I got adopted yeah. into this and we're supposed to not yeah, like And I was them. like, I don't like you at all. And I, <laughs> it's really yeah. silly. No, it's kind of, uh, yeah, it, it's kind of fun. I mean, obviously, um, it's, it's kind of like a walk in a tightrope at times. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've experienced it myself. Uh, I mean, it's very difficult to um, sort of work in an industry and then do a podcast. Um, I have one thing I've made sure uh, to not do is, is blacklist anyone mm -hmm. whatsoever from being on the show. And occasionally I kind of feel like I still have to remind the audience from time to time because I think a lot of people will like binge listen. Mm -hmm. um, they'll listen to 10 episodes and then boom, but they hadn't listened for a while, mm -hmm. you know, and then some will listen every Wednesday or, and really get some cool text messages at times. Hey, I like that show. And it's, I mean, all those things are encouraging to me. Right. Yeah. But I, I guess the point I'm trying to make is like the industry can be very, um, and not just this industry, uh, it, it could just be very protective. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to be, you want to protect your own brand and your own vision. Um, and you can't give too much away. Um, I've said it time and time again, like, you know, I'm, I'm maintaining ownership, uh, even against offers uh, to purchase the podcast. You yeah. know what I mean? Because I don't want to blacklist anybody yeah. uh, advertising. Anyone's welcome. Um, but that doesn't mean that I don't still have like my affiliate partnership. You know what I mean? Where I will promote a product or specifically offer sales for a, a yeah. particular product. And that's very difficult because if it touches on any uh, like competitive nature with, with someone else, um, it's kind of like saying, you know, I'm not saying I want to win everything. I'm mm -hmm. saying I want to win on what I'm doing, but it's, I don't want to burn your, your, your candle out. Definitely. You know, if, if they're both burning and I burn yours out, we, we both have less light. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and vice versa, you know what I mean? Uh, so I want to see people win. I want to see even my competition, you know, win mm -hmm. because I think there's just, I don't know, I guess for me, um, we was talking about ministry before we got on the air here and, you know, I want to see people succeed. I want to see community succeed. And, and I want to see even the shed community succeed. So sometimes that's, it's a very like hard, like line to, to walk. Yeah. But most people have been very, uh, very welcoming. Yeah. I, I like I, I said, when, when I'm, when I went to the shed show, I was, I was very surprised with just the, the conversations that we'd strike up. I mean, a lot of times not even about sheds or marketing. And yeah. It, it's, biggest nicest group of people i've ever been welcomed into yeah no i think uh ed Wynn said something about that uh, i went to the nbsra and he he had mentioned something about that especially in his profession as a lawyer he said you know it's been tough it's uh not tough but i mean like you know it's a very dog eat dog mm -hmm. world and he, he was talking about just like his uh um appreciation mm -hmm. that he had for an industry that would kind of come together yeah. and not just be all about uh, that dog eat dog mentality yeah. from power to money to, to everything else. Uh, it's tempting. It's always tempting, especially when there's money and, and, and power involved mm -hmm. and influence. But um, gosh, man, I just think, uh, I think what you're doing is cool. Uh, I love talking to people in the shed industry and somebody with the name shed genius. That's right up my alley. Yeah. Uh, what would you want to final thoughts? What would you want to let the final thoughts for the audience to know about shed genius and about Nick Bishop? Yeah. So, um, I, I mean, I'd love to, I, I've, I met a, a large portion of folks when we were at the Shed Show. I'd love to meet a lot more of you. Even if you don't want our services, I'd still love to, to introduce myself just to, to learn more about the industry. I, I'm, I like to think of myself as like a sponge. I want to right. learn as much yeah. as I can. Yeah. Um, when I quit going to, I thought leaving school was going to be the best thing ever. Never had to do homework, never had to learn more things. <laughs> and I found myself just wanting to constantly learn more since. Um, so, I mean, I'd love to just chat with, like I said, even if you don't need marketing, you don't need any shed genius services. Um, I just want to know more. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll give you guys my personal number. Yeah, go for it. 316-308-4824. Um, yeah, just give me a call. I'd love to chat. If you do need our services, that's fantastic as well. Love to help you out. Um, the, the fact that, you know, we, we care about our clients. Um, 
you know, I, I coming from the world that I was in, you know, thank yous were very, you know, few and far between. Yep. And especially like working with, I mean, sometimes even the Amish and the Mennonite community, like they're so thankful yep. and that makes what we do even better at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I have found, um, I definitely felt like I found a home, mm -hmm. you know, here, whenever I landed here and I've got other dreams. There's other things yeah. I want to do, of course, you know, and I love the idea of podcasting. Yeah. Uh, I, I talk anyway, like, <laughs> so to be able to make a living off of it, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I've, I've, I've been a professional marketer for, you know, 10 plus years of this time. And as I kind of talked about what I've done, I've, I've jumped around a little bit and I'm, I'm happy to stay here for, for a yeah. long while. Yeah. No, I think it's great, man. Uh, your authenticity comes across, I think, uh, just being in person. This is what I love about in-person interviews. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it comes across. We got to meet at this cool office yeah. here in Springfield. Yeah. Which, I mean, this place is awesome. Was, we'll yeah, I was very surprised. We were kind of just coming around, and all of a sudden, this this beautiful building just popped yeah. up out of nowhere. Oh, cool. Well, I appreciate you guys yeah. uh, meeting me out here. I want to get to know you more, uh, certainly down the road. Yeah. Uh, you got a friend here, man, so give me a call anytime you want. Thank you so much. Appreciate you being on the show today. Thanks for having me. All right.